Walker with proven tips from her new book, Restoring Order to Your Home. Please welcome AM Northwest organizing expert, Vicki Norris. Hi, hey, Vicki. It's so true. I, now I, I know for you, because you're great at being organized, you know how to do it. One room would be a failure in your mind. In my home, if only one room were unorganized, woohoo, party time. <laughs> the only time all of the rooms look good is if there's a party, actually. So, what, you know, it, what, what is the, what's the secret, really, to keeping your entire home organized? Well, first you have to get it that way. Yeah. <laughs> and so, um, one of the things I've done with this book, Restoring Order to Your Home, is just help people figure out room by room how to go through their whole house because actually the secret is if you do one room but the rest is a mess it's probably not going to last that way right. so really we want to help people understand how to assess their situation and then tackle room by room throughout their house there's uh, one room at least in my house where we just kind of throw everything in when people are coming over we grab stuff and Helen, throw it. we gotta go there I know <laughs> you, you call a lot of people do that it's called the dumping room right you it just throw stuff yeah. in there mm -hmm. the multi-purpose room uh, yeah. it's one of the hot spots there are several hot spots within the home but that's one of them. Kitchens, garages, home offices are also really bad. But that multi-purpose room where you're kind of trying to have maybe a home office and a guest room and a hobby room. Oh, yeah. I know you have a couple extra spaces for those activities, but a lot of people just have that, that dash and stash room. So you're saying, though, there's a way to take that dash and stash room, that dump room, mm -hmm. and actually organize it so that it still can be a multi-purpose room? Yes, definitely. But what you want to do is you want to purpose your space. And I show kind of how to do that, but what you want to figure out is what, your, what activities you want to have happen in that room. Okay. And you want to limit those activities. You don't want five things going on, two or three at the very most, and then you want to zone the space. But I do break the book down into public spaces, private spaces, and storage spaces. Because again, we're looking room by room throughout the home, and I want to help people re-envision their space too. Because you know, so many people use those dining rooms and living rooms just as desk collectors. Right. We're not doing anything with them. And I want to help people reclaim their home for, for fun and for fellowship. Okay, let's give our viewers at home some practical tips now. So we've, we've decided what the purpose for our room is. Say it's the kitchen. Okay. Clearly it's to cook and it's to eat, mm -hmm. right? So how do you start organizing the kitchen? I know you helped me organize mine because I had a drawer full of Tupperware stuff that was kind of unbuttered, empty butter containers and that kind of stuff. Because right. you were saving them just in case. Just in case. I yeah. know. Everybody has that just in case. Well, what we recommend is doing what we call a total burn down. And talk about how to do that. It doesn't involve matches. We wish it did sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> People say, can we just start over? But what you want to do is total burn down means you touch everything. You don't just do one drawer or one set of cabinets. You want to do the whole kitchen. And you want to set up zones within that space. And I talk about how to do that sorting process so that you too can have the secrets of a professional organizer. So I talked about how our organizers would get in there and, and customize a kitchen to the user. Like for example, we have a client who's a little petite gal, she's a gourmet chef, but we have to make sure that the lower edges of her cabinets are the ones that we use rather than the high spaces. That's where the infrequently things infrequently used things need to go for her because she's petite. So we use below the counter and the lower level of the shelves just for her. So it's about customizing. All right, now answer the fight that my wife and I have all the time. <laughs> I say the secret to being organized is you put things away when you're done with them. You don't leave them out and do it later. Uh, right I'm in your camp. Okay. <laughs> I'm in your camp because I think it takes so much longer if you wait and then you have all these go elsewhere items. You know, they're littered throughout the house. So cleaning up as you go um, in, is an important habit. And that's one of the things we have to look at is maintenance. You know, a lot of people set up a system that's too complicated and they don't know really how to maintain it. If you drop your shoes by the door, you should work with your natural habits and put a shoe bin by the door. Um, a lot of people, when they're making files, they'll, they'll want to make them look pretty. So they'll yeah. put them all on the computer, the little labels on the computer. Then when they want to make a new file, it just seems like too much of a pain to create a whole label just for this one file. So what happens? paper piles up on your desk. And so you want to look at your natural style, your natural habits when you're organizing your household. Um, and there's a lot of rooms to think of. And those same principles apply whether it's the kitchen, the public space, a private space? Well, the same principles apply. And I do refer a lot back to the first book because my first book, as you know, is kind of the organizing strategies, you know, the concepts of, of really changing your life through organizing. But the private spaces in the home are kind of where we dash and stash because no one's going in there. Right. The public spaces are where we're entertaining. Dining room, living room, family room, kitchen, kitchen. and even the, the playroom where your friends are having kids over. So they want to be, you want it to be presentable but livable for your family. But then there's the storage spaces like the closets, garage, um, the basement, the attic, and we just 
she step, step and toss. Yeah. Right. We step in and we toss. The multi-purpose room could also fall in that category sometimes. We're just using it for storage. And so those storage spaces, you got to figure out what you're going to use them for. I understand that you're not a big believer in the separating for, um, you know, this is going to donate, this is getting tossed out. How do you believe in separating things when you're deciding to make a change? For instance, let's say in the storage room. Mm -hmm. Well, what, I, what we follow is, and what I've taught my organizers to do, is a really organic process. Instead of imposing the categories, you actually start pulling everything out, item by item, and you say, what is this? Okay, this is a Christmas decoration, and I don't know how it got in here. You know? So you start a box that says Christmas. Then you go to the next thing. Oh, this is my dishes, my Christmas set. You know, How did that get in the, the hall closet? You put it over here. And you just organically figure out what's in the space, and you create the categories as they emerge. Then you say, how did 29 different categories get in here? What do I want to use this closet? space for or multi-purpose room for and then you begin purposing it from there you say this is going to be the linen closet or this is going to be a game closet where we store all the games what, what about all that stuff that you hang on to because one day you know you're going to need it it's going to be valuable you're and never you know the find second you get rid of it you then it. you need it so where, what, what do you do with that stuff yeah that is organizing purgatory <laughs> <laughs> A lot of people do that, you know, they, they collect all these things, and I think this is where, like, eBay and all of these um, Craigslist, you know, we tell ourselves, well, I'm going to sell it someday. Right. You know? So it's not even I might use it someday, now it's like I could sell it. But these are some of the people who don't even know how to use a computer. Right. You who are saying this, you know, they have, we have clients that have a whole room or a whole closet full of things they're going to sell someday. So it's really just about getting practical, getting honest with yourself. And, and really making room in your life for the things that truly matter. That's what organizing is about. Not about having a perfect home, but making room. So there's breathing room in your home, and you have harmony in the home. That's really important. Do you have a rule of thumb, very quickly, uh, that if you haven't used it in X number of days, months, years, get rid of it no matter what? You know, I don't. I just think it's really, because some people would say, well, I haven't used this teacup collection, um, and, but I inherited it from my grandmother. I'm just not ready to let go of it. And so unlike those TV shows where people are left crying, you know, because someone took their favorite collection away that grandma gave them, we're not, never going to do that. You know, I really think that organizing is about um, your priorities and making room for those things that are important. And if you don't feel safe letting it go, it's not about forcing people to let things go. But when you do prune, and you let go of some things, you're ditching the deadwood in the rooms of you your home. You feel better. Yeah, you Very really cool. do. We have an exciting organizing contest that we're offering to folks, and this is where you get the services of a professional organizer, Vicki Norris. And what we need you to do is send us a picture of your room, the room that really needs some help. Then you need to tell us why this room needs help, um, why you need help. Now, the deadline is February the 2nd. And we want you to go to amnw at k2.com for more contest rules. But we're very excited. But please be sure to enter by February 2nd and send a picture of the room and why you need an organizer. And there, the specific rules, we want to have you on TV, so we need to make sure those dates are free and all that kind of stuff. That's right. And then we're going to send in the whole restoring order team, and we're going to make over that space. It could be a small space. Um, it could be a larger space. Not the whole house, though. We don't have time for that. Thank you. <laughs> Now, you know what, uh, I know that you just had a change in your life that I don't know that you can keep order with a baby, but you have a brand new baby. Yes, here can we introduce you to Nash Norris. Look at that. Look at this, and Trevor. This is my husband, Trevor. Yes. This is exciting. Yeah, we've been doing the bump check all year, so, well, nine months, ten months, you know, they lie, it is ten months. <laughs> And so we thought we'd bring Nash a little Nash. Nash. And uh, what I understand about your, your baby's room is that everything is labeled extremely, <laughs> extremely organized. Do you plan to keep this up for... You, you know, know, what's funny is that when we put um, our nursery on TV uh, and we did a segment from AM mm -hmm. West there, people called in and said, it's not going to stay that way. <laughs> I just want to say, come on over, because it is still that she way. Well, right, what, I think wait days. till he's about seven. We'll see. Yeah, one, no, one of these days we're just going to come in there like, you know, oh, Publisher surprise. Clearinghouse. Let's we're do just a gonna surprise. Come, yeah, one day we're we just going to, yeah, yeah, because I, I, if you can do it. You're welcome. Come on uh, down. Uh, we want to tell folks if they want to get a hold of Vicki Norris, we're going to put the phone number on the screen there, and also it's on our website at k2.com. Congratulations Thank again, you guys, Trevor. Congrats. Okay, ladies.